All right, we're back, and I hope you enjoyed your coffee break. Now, before going on to the alumni pitch and a presentation from FDUA, I'd like to remind you to vote for the Audience Award because that will be closing soon. So please scan the code and vote for your favorites right now. And now from here, we will have the alumni pitch, which is something new this year. Last year's winning startups will introduce their current developments and success services. First is a presentation by Ms. Saito of Mean Company Limited. And take it away, the stage is yours. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mai Saito, founder of CEO of Meme Corporation. I'd like to present that Manimo is teaching financial literacy for kids. Do you have such an experience from your childhood? Or if you have children, do you have such problems with your kids? Always begging money, lending money between their friends, Nowadays, parents do not pay, the, pay by cash, so children do not know the coins and change. Children pay at online by using parents' credit card without asking. Many people want their kids to know the importance of money, but parents do not know how to teach to their kids about basic financial skills. People want their kids to grow up financial smart, but there are no financial curriculum is provided at schools, so parents don't know how and want what to teach their kids about basic financial skills because they haven't been taught themselves. It said import it 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 is said important to understand the flow of money between kids and parents and make it with everyday habits. Kids and ki uh, parents give the financial literacy training for kids and keep on eyes on kids' money. Our kids should be are conscious of money and repeat the recording every time and they used or earn money. But it's very hard to continue to do by using just uh, only paper and pencil. So the best solution is for the digital native is the Manimo. Manimo is the mobile application for our for kids, which can teach the financial literacy by providing kids' debit card. We have three main features of Manimo. First of all, uh, parents transfer money to kids, and kids earn money by creating chores and missions. When kids complete the chores, they can receive an allowance through the application. Also, kids can use the debit card at online and physical stores. Parents control how much kids can spend and they can know all histories. Moreover, kids create, create the wish list and saving goals so they can learn how to save and plan to spend their own money. Manimo is not just a cashless card. It is, it's an application with everyday habits for better money communication between parents and kids. About the business model, Manimo is monthly subscription model. The customer need to pay about $3 per month in order to use this full function. Also, interchange fees will be our revenue model too. We are now developing change the system with parent, parents can transfer money to kids prepaid card from, from over 140 banks. Our total addressable market is children who receive allowance and need to manage the money with their parents. We estimated 12 million people in Japan, and this gives 22 billion US dollar market, market share. Our main target is age 10 to 18. We are going to expand the target age 19 to 22 by developing additional function and cover aged six to eight years old too. Our business model is not only this, we are going to provide this Manimo's payment system to the public schools in Japan, which is called a Scoopay. Scoopay is the best solution for the public schools, which can be paid the school's fees by cashless payment from parents. Today, how to school collect the school's fees from the parents? They are still using this envelope. Nowadays, 40% of uh, public schools ask parents to pay, uh, pay the uh, school fees by cash, or other 60% is paid by the bank account. But this is not just a bank account. 
Uh, school asks ask parents to open a new bank account uh, on the specified bank. Why cash and specified bank accounts are inconvenient for parents? Because for cash, children should bring the money at school. Sometimes they lose money. Also, parents should prepare money without change. Also for the bank account, because parents do not use the bank account for daily use, sometimes there are no, ma no money at their bank account. Moreover, for the teachers and the schools, it's extremely difficult to collect money from parents. So how we can solve this problem by money mode payment system? First of all, teachers issue an invoice to parents by using Scoopay's web application. Parents receive those invoices and open the web application by their mobile phone. So how to connect between the schools and the parents? We are going to use the ICT service, which are already used at schools. For example, there are communication digital application between parents and schools. Money mode payment service is going to be embedded on this uh, other ICT service. We already have the partnership with one ICT service, which are used more than 1,200 schools. Scoopay is not only the giving the payment solution to the parents, but also solve the school's problems at the, some, at the same time. 80% of teachers are, are feel collecting money from parents are cost is too much because they spend more than 960 hours per year to collect the school's fees from students and parents. Teachers want to use cashless payment at the schools, but it's difficult to introduce because public schools need to decide a budget for the next year. But cashless payment is already required to pay the interchange fees, which is not fixed. Also, schools want parents to pay by bank account, not using the car, car, cashless card and digital money. So our payment is connected to over 140 banks, are, and parents choose any banks they already have, and pay directly from the bank accounts to schools. And there are no interchange fees, only monthly subscri subscription fees only. All payment data is updated on real time. Let's see how it works. This is Scoopay's screen and teachers issue an invoice by using this web service. When they push the button which said issue and see the invoice and parents and the parents receive the notification through the connecting the ICT service. So when the parents open the ICT application, they see the, they receive the invoice and the from the teachers. They push the button which say the pay money and then our payment web application comes up and check the details and the invoice and just push the pay again. That, that's all. It's very easy and this payment updated on real time and teachers see who, which students have already paid or not. Our, our, our alliance is like this. Uh, the school uses Scoopay web service and, and payment for the parents are used by the MoneyMo systems. We have two types of, uh, two, two types of alliance already, which is distributed and embedded our, embedded our payment system to ICT service. We, all, we are already have two, two alliances with other companies and already started the POC with the schools and the teachers at the Kanaga prefectures. Our whole business model is like this. Money more subscription is the basis of our, our revenue. We are going to acquire the users of Money more through the, the users of Scoopay. Also, we are willing to provide the financial literacy skills at, to all students and kids at schools in the near future. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more, you can check our website and uh, you can contact me directly. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Saito. Now, from last year, um, what sort of major improvements have you made? Uh, we released the application on, on the last summer. So this is the, our, uh, the biggest improvement last year.
All right, thank you. Thank it's great you. to see the pro progress you've made. Thank you, Ms. Saito. You may take your seat. Thank you so much. And the next company is Sustainable Lab Incorporated. Mr. Hidase will be doing the presentation. The stage is yours. Hello, yes. Yeah, uh, on behalf of, of our founder, Renji Hirase, uh, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, so my name is Kotaro Takahashi, CEO of Sustainable Lab. So first of all, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity again this time to uh, introduce what we have done so far and uh, what, what, what is our ambition. So uh, again, we are Sustainable Lab, uh, the data science company uh, focusing on the ESG data. So what we are trying to create is the, to create the non-financial data infrastructure by the power of data science. Okay, so uh, we are kind of diversified the team. Uh, the team is around, team size is around 40 plus at this point. So we are growing in the past one year, significantly. And uh, in terms of the diversification wise, the, so uh, around the half of the employees are coming from the kind of non-Japanese uh, nationalities and from the different locations. So we, we literally try to become the international company. Yeah. So our mission is to try to make us, you know, world sustainable, but uh, how to make it happen? So uh, let's get understand what's happening in ESG space first. So there is a massive momentum uh, in the ESG investing and uh, green finance uh, market, also the corporate sustainability disclosure market. So that is our uh, business domain. And uh, there are a lot of uh, parties uh, has a demand, huge demand to access to the ESG data, especially more rich ESG data. So we conducted hundreds of interviews from ESG professionals, uh, financial institutions, and corporates, and to try to find out uh, where is the hot spot to be solved? What was the most significant problem to be solved? So that process was very uh, deep, and uh, it took so much time and effort. And it turns out, so what was the result? Actually, most of them replied, responded that everything is the most serious. Yeah. Oh, seriously. So, wow. So that, that was our initial response. So we decided to create the holistic solution. So because we believe that that will be the answer. So currently, in, uh, during the past one year, we developed the two products. So now we have two products. First is called telast. Uh, it means in Japanese, telasu hito, so shining uh, person. So we want to shine, we want to illuminate the companies who should be invested, who should be evaluated in a good way. Not only from the profitable, financially good, also environmentally good, socially good, human capitally good. That kind of non-financial values should be something to be evaluated in the next generation. So that is our belief. So we developed then the launch the Telast, and uh, which is used by the asset managers, financial institutions, and corporate strategy people, whoever who wants to have who has to do our kind of uh, ESG research, uh, which is currently quite a messy process because there are so many different disclosures, informations are very unstructured, scattered. So purely messy. So that's why we leverage the AI and the machine learning to consolidate the data, aggregate the data into one platform, one stop platform, to help them to conduct the ESG research faster and more creative. That is our first product. And second product is called T4E. It means the Terrace for Enterprise. So that product helps enterprises, but not only enterprises, also SMBs, small business enterprises which are most of the uh, market uh, players in Japan, also another country as well. So that's why Terrace for Enterprise will help and support enterprises, including SMBs, to gather the ESG data by themselves in a good way and a better way. So, so that is the, uh, our second product. And how those two products work? So this slide shows, explains the, uh, our business model very briefly. 
So on the left side, uh, which is the Telast model, this is quite simple. Uh, this is the SAS, B2B SAS model. So we directly charge from uh, uh, ESG professionals, uh, customers directly. And the uh, Trustable Enterprise model is uh, without the bank's financial institutions, this model wouldn't work. So we currently working with some of the uh, financial institutions uh, to create the win-win situation. So long story short, um, sorry, I gotta skip this. So let's focusing on the how uh, our, you know strategic alliance model with banks work. Uh, basically, uh, we we create the kind of uh, ecosystem that um, banks are able to monitor and identify and uh, support their corporate clients' ESG data, ESG situation, ESG progress, and so that is the uh, first model. And uh, it's free of charge. It's free to use from corporate side because the. Uh, most of the corporates uh, cannot afford to maybe take care of the ESG at this moment. They need to care about the cash flows and the other uh, you know, management related matters. But we believe that uh, ESG transformation, sustainability transformation is gonna help end up to help support corporates to in terms of the branding, hiring, attract the people, also of course the environment, uh, of course engage with the uh, you know, uh, employees and the stakeholders. So by illuminating, by quantifying, and uh, by visualizing the level of maturity of their ESG level, uh, it's gonna take the huge value, corporate value, and uh, uniqueness, competitiveness. So to do so, we need to have a strategic alliance with the bank's financial institutions to support, and that uh, they, they want to take care of their corporate uh, corporate clients, sustainability, of course. So that's why uh, this is the win-win situation. Also, there are a lot of uh, new businesses are uh, born and happening. So for example, there are a lot of ESG improvement supporters, such as ESG consultancies, ESG advisories, uh, green tech companies, etc., etc. So whoever that is, so our business model is connecting all of those ESG uh, supporters and the players and the corporates uh, by quantifying the level of the ESG. So this is the beginning for uh, especially small medium enterprises to start, kick start, uh, identifying the, the level of ESG. Uh, also, those data can be utilized by any single players, including financial institutions and the ESG improvement supporters. So that is uh, we are call, called the ESG data infrastructure, ESG data ecosystem. So this ecosystem, once th this is built, this is established in a few years, uh, this is gonna be very powerful because that is called, we, that's, we call the, the largest ESG KYC or ESG due diligence platform, which can be used by the financial institutions uh, for uh, ESG credit. Also, m and forms for ESG due diligence process, even for HR recruiting services, who wants to help their candidates to find out, identify which company is the most ESG-friendly companies. If they, it can be possible, uh, the candidates, it's very easy and uh, quickly to make a decision to uh, which company we should apply for. So that is the, what we call the ESG data infrastructure, ESG data ecosystem. So, so far, um, uh, since we launched a product within the year, we launched two products. So the Terrast, uh, we already acquired more than 40 plus uh, paid customers, yeah, such as uh, big fours and the business corporations, financial institutions, academias, uh, whoever who wants to do acquire the ESG data or research. So that is the first one. And uh, Terrasport Enterprise. So within the six months since we launched the product, uh, the number of uh, freemium customers exceeded more than 500 plus uh, in a short amount of time. And also we are selected as another several accelerators such as SAP or MFG Digital Acceleration or Prang and Pray Japan. And also we got a chance to present at the COP26 uh, as a one of the delegation around two years ago. 
And uh, we are uh, working with the Forbes uh, to co-create the contents to promote the uh, importance of uh, ESG management, ESG transformation, et cetera, et cetera. So in the past one year was very fruitful, very variable, very intensive moment with us. Yep. So I'm gonna skip this because a little bit sensitive, sorry for that. So last one is we are still uh, looking for the potential strategic partners uh, for financial institutions to create the uh, uh, small business enterprises uh, support model, also enterprises to work on uh, their sustainability transformation. Also, any uh, ESG professionals, such as advisories, consulting, uh, tech players, whoever that is, uh, whoever is interested in creating the ESG uh, data ecosystem, uh, we are very welcomed. So let's create the ESG data ecosystem together. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Hirase. So what would you say is one of the major improvements that you've made since last year? Since last year, yeah, uh, there are so many things, but uh, I would say we launched the two products just within one year, yeah. All right, excellent. Yeah. Very good to see your progress. Another round of applause for Mr. Hirase, thank you. Next is a presentation by Mr. Ali Kivi of G Bank Technologies OU. And I see you're already there, so your presentation can begin right now. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Raul, and I'm a CEO and co-founder of Kiga. So Kiga is basically um, Neo Bank, not 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 actually a bank, but we do provide we facilitate banking services to foreigners living in Japan. Um, Myself, I'm also a foreigner who has lived in Japan for a long time. And the first time I came to this country was 21 years ago as a student. And um, what happened was that uh, at that time, I was able to get this uh, flip phone, which I could, I could see um, TV from a phone in 2001. That was like uh, not possible in any other country at that time. And then uh, I went to the bank to open a bank account. And uh, I got a paper bank book and a cash card. Uh, bank book looked cool. There was like some kind of uh, Disney characters on it. It was great. But uh, in Estonia, I'm from Estonia, so I originally uh, we already used internet banking and debit cards was quite common at that time. So I was a little bit surprised. Like wow, like one way Japan is really advanced, and the other way it's like lagging behind. And uh, today, like 21 years later, still like more than half of uh, foreigners who are coming to Japan, their experience with Japanese banking is still paper-based bank book and the plastic cash card. And uh, what it means is that uh, the reason is because only very few banks in Japan provide um, customer service in English and uh, intro, like uh, mobile apps in English. And uh, also, so also me, like I've been in Japan for a long time. I don't really have any Japanese credit cards. I'm using still my Estonian credit cards when I make payments here, and then I need to send money back to cover for those. So uh, most people end up opening some kind of bank account, uh, mostly in Japan Post Bank. Uh, but uh, very, it's very hard for foreigners in Japan to enjoy any kind of higher level um, financial services. So, uh, but actually at the same time, the number of foreigners in Japan is going to increase. So like uh, half jokingly, but there are like two growth markets in Japan, elderly people and foreigners. And today the base for foreigners is quite low. So we have like 1.7 million people uh, with working visas in Japan. But uh, because Japanese working uh, population is going to decrease uh, by 2030 by more than 6 million people, then uh, of course Japan is to compensate somehow. And it will not be only about with foreigners coming to Japan, but also like increased productivity, like people maybe working longer before retirement and so on. But uh, at the very least, the number of foreigners in Japan will multiply. And uh, today, Japanese banks, if you talk about their actual thinking, what they actually think about foreigners as customers, it's mostly, uh, they actually don't want to serve foreigners. Reason being, because they're not profitable. Uh, as a, most people are not, do not qualify for any loans or credit cards. They only use accounts. So Japanese banks with their current cost structures, they cannot make any money out of those customers. And uh, to deal with them, there's extra uh, investments needed. 
but uh, to invest money to, for, to cater for a small number of uh, your customers who actually are loss-making, it doesn't make much uh, business sense. So as a result, uh, today, like, some, some banks actually actively want not to serve foreigners in this market. But at the same time, kind of, uh, as a country, there is actually a big challenge because uh, this financial inclusion for foreigners is really crucial for the Japanese future. So, uh, when it comes to different phases, then foreigners are having difficulties with opening account, but also uh, daily banking is difficult because of the language and the complex procedures. Japanese usually don't really feel that because that's uh, easy. But when it comes to kind of trust, getting access to credit or uh, like loans, then foreigners, of course, don't have this access. But even Japanese uh, gig workers, part-time employees, people who work in like, new ways, it's still challenging also for them. And uh, looking from the bank's viewpoint, uh, most clients, even Japanese or foreigners alike, uh, they never close accounts. So there are many so-called zombie accounts in Japan. So. Uh, so like also this kind of um, side of banking relationships can also be uh, done much better. Uh, so Wiskiga. So we keep, Wiskiga, we actually are a company from Estonia. But uh, we started the company in Estonia to do business in Japan. Uh, because I was feeling the deficiencies uh, as, as living a foreigner in Japan. And basically, uh, I knew that things can be much better. So the uh, idea was that we, were, we are using say, fintech knowledge that we have in Estonia. So I have one of my co-founders, he's actually a former TransferWise uh, guy who actually helped TransferWise to come to Japan six, seven years ago, uh, and later helped to build a neobank uh, in the US. And I also the second co-founder is a Japanese banker who was working for 13 years for the largest bank in Japan. So what we do, so in our case, we know about the most recent um, kind of fintech developments in uh, Europe, uh, but also we actually are local in Japan and we understand the Japanese uh, banking and regulation in, in, um, in great detail. And uh, we've been actually working for two years to get to this point as we are today. And the uh, main inspiration for us was actually like those two companies. So there is a company called Moniz in the UK, providing uh, also financial services to foreigners and also majority in the US, uh, also catering the needs for migrants. And the uh, question for us was that, okay, like this non-banks providing actually banking services, quite common model in Europe or the US, can it be done in Japan? And uh, when we looked around, most Japanese fintechs, like uh, next, next wave guys, they were focusing very much on prepaid cards, not really doing bank accounts. Uh, global fintechs, like Revolut actually, the model what they were using in the beginning in the UK was very similar to what we wanted, wanted to do in Japan, but in Japan they were not able to do it. So in Japan the uh, service is more limited. And there are like some uh, Japanese banks actually understanding the need for foreigner uh, market, but still, uh, like personally being a foreigner, I didn't really, I didn't really feel understood. So uh, I think there is still uh, space for Giga. And what we did, uh, we looked at the regulation. So uh, most uh, neo banks, basically non banks providing banking services in Japan, they are using bank agency license, Kinko Dairigyo. Uh, and the position is that you are selling. Uh, bank you're a reseller for bank services and getting paid from the bank. Uh, whereas in Europe or the US, the uh, model works a different uh, logic, which is more closer to electronic payment settlement operator license, so Densi Gesaito Taitogyo license, uh, where you, uh, like fintech company connects to the bank through APIs and uh, helps to open the account to, to transactions and also close account if necessary. In Japan, this, like, it's a very similar license, but it was not really used in that way until now. And uh, most people told us, like, no, 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 you still need to get the bank agency license. But uh, the logic with electronic payment settlement operator license would be that we are actually representing the end user and doing the transactions with the bank on their behalf. And uh, we were lucky to actually find a Japanese bank who was understanding our uh, concept and uh, they wanted also to start with uh, banking as a service model, so UI Bank, part of uh, Tokyo Kiraboshi Financial Group. And uh, we were last October, like we were actually able to get the license. And uh, we actually last week we launched the service publicly, so it's actually now available. So it, it means that uh, this license allows to do actually serve. Uh, clients in a way as it's done in other countries. So, uh, so what we have, like, I'm calling like first real kind of European American neobank model in Japan. 
So uh, it's 100% mobile and digital. Just download the app to EKYC, uh, put in the information, and uh, basically we will forward the information to our partner bank, and they will decide if to open a bank account for the customer or not. And uh, so we started last week with uh, just with bank account, uh, domestic transfers, and uh, well, cash card still. Uh, because we need people still need to get out some money from their bank account, and using ATMs uh, is the uh, easiest way. But uh, later this year, we want to we will introduce payment cards, international remittance that people can do from this app, and also um, we actually want to essentially pro uh, help those people to get trust and uh, be able to access higher level of financial services. Um, our business model: we just charge monthly uh, membership fee which is like 1,100 yen. But uh, as a return, we give a free use of ATMs and uh, domestic transfers. So people don't have to worry about uh, like single fees, just like a very clear, very simple monthly fee. And uh, we are planning to add like not only financial services, but other kind of services that people would need when they move to Japan and need to uh, build up their lives here. Um, we launched last week with in English, uh, Japanese and Vietnamese. Um, and uh, we will actually planning. We are planning to add quite a, quite a few next uh, languages to the, um, our service as well. And uh, once we are able to move from this kind of banking services to, towards creating trust and credit, I believe that by that moment, already we are able to add extra value also to Japanese gig workers, uh, part-time employees, and basically people who are not getting enough trust currently from the existing. Uh, financial institutions. Uh, so, so last year we built SAP, like last year actually after participating in Pinopitch. <laughs> we built SAP, we raised uh, our pre-seed, uh, we got licensed, we signed a contract with a partner bank and uh, already started testing with first accounts. And uh, just last week we launched public beta, so uh, it's only available on Android. So like if you go to Google Play Store, you're actually able to download. You still need to get the invite code to be able to onboard. And we need to be at payment cards, international remittance. Uh, we will make the EP connections more efficient and uh, kind of very ambitious goal to actually get 40,000 customers. So we'll see about that. And we we're actually starting to fundraise again. So we uh, need to raise a seed round by, by this summer as well also. Uh, so. If, so that's kind of for, for me, like a, a kind of ask, like if you guys, if you happen to have Android phone, um, you are not in Japan on a student visa. We cannot actually cater for students like with MVP. And uh, also Americans, we cannot actually cater for Americans because of tax reasons. But uh, then we just uh, download the app, get the invite code and start using us. So like, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's meant for foreigners, but if you're Japanese and want to try it out, it's also possible. So thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Ali Kive. And congratulations for winning the Collaboration Award at JFIA this morning. Could you please tell us a little bit more about your experience? Yeah, so I think we won the Collaboration Award this morning um, because um, this license thing, what I was talking about, this is very unique. And uh, without like a strong like banking partner who is actually sharing our vision and is willing to uh, work closely with us to actually achieve, like, uh, to, com to complete this business model, what we plan. Uh, it's not easy, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't easy for us. Uh, we actually, uh, what we were able to, we got, to, after we were able to secure the commitment from UI Bank, like our partner bank, we actually had uh, for several months daily meetings with them, discussing all the challenges and like, just uh, like uh, clearing them one by one. So it, those things don't happen fast, but uh, if there is enough kind of goodwill and kind of uh, uh, goal-oriented cooperation from both sides, then it's possible. So like also uh, to all kind of foreign startups, like uh, my message would be that uh, Japan feels like a market that is uh, has different language, which is difficult to understand, and maybe feels a little bit closed, but. Uh, like our experience is that actually Japanese companies and the Japanese startup ecosystem, fintech startup ecosystem, it's very, actually very excited to have uh, people and companies coming from other countries. And it's actually very open. What, it really helps if you can speak Japanese though, because uh, their language barrier sometimes hides the fact that actually it's really open. But I would definitely encourage people to explore more opportunities in Japan. 
Thank you, Mr. Alikivi. It's great to hear about the progress you've made in the last year. All right, next, we will have a presentation by FDUA, the Financial Data Utilizing Association. And this presentation will be in Japanese. They have started their activity from June 2022, and their first publication, Success Pattern of Financial AI, was just published last month. The speaker is Mr. Okada, Representative Director at FDUA. The stage is yours. Dozo. え、金融データ活用推進協会の代表である岡田と申します。今日英語のペッチですけども、そろそろ皆さん日本語が聞きたいなと思っているのかなと思いまして、あえて日本語でですね、話したいなと思います。よろしくお願いします。で、金融データ
でこの開催の思いはですね私が社団法人を設立した時からとにかく金融業界のニューヒーローを誕生させたいんだと金融業界というのはもう私はずっと金融のですねもう泥臭いところにいたんですごく思いが強いんですけども実は結構地頭が良かったりしてプログラミングとかイノベーションに強い人材っていうのは隠れているというふうに信じていますそれは営業店であったり事務セクションであったりそういうところに本当は優秀な人材がいるところをうまく発掘できてないのではないかと。そういう意味ではこれはどこにいても誰でも無料で参加できますので公正にそのプログラミングの能力というのを測ってそこの上位の方をニューヒーローとしてお祝いしたいとそういう思いで尖った子を発掘したいということで始めたわけでございます。そしてやるのであれば日本初やっぱ業界横断で金融が明るくなるような未来を作りたいとそういう思いで古社の囲い込みではなくて競合が手をつないでですね、MFG みずほ、SMFG 一緒になって人材を発掘して育成して盛り上げていこうと、まあ、そこにはもう大学生だったりとか他の業種の方もどんどんどんどん入ってきてほしいそういう思いで始めたわけでありますそして特徴的なのがこのデータ数とデータのカラムですねこれも日本初で110万件のデータを使ってますデータの種類も48件48種類ですねでこれは金融機関の実務に近い人工的なデータを使っているわけですけれどもなかなかこういう一般的な例えば米国だとカグルとか日本だとシグネットっていうコンペティションでオープンデータしか使うことができなかったそれはやっぱり、まあ、秘匿な情報というのはなかなか使うことができないただそれであればなかなか人材の発掘とかオープンイノベーションというのは進まないだろうということで本当に金融の実務に近いデータですねこれを110万件人工的に用意してこのデータを触ってもらおうとそういうコンペティションを開催したということでありますでそしてやっぱ1600人以上の方が参加したのであれば豪華にお祝いをしようということで今回は住宅ローンの延滞を予測するというそういう金融実務にのっとったテーマなわけですけれども表彰式3月27日月曜日まさに今準備中ですがここには金融業界を代表する方々にですねその金融機関のニューヒーローをお祝いしてほしいと思っています。金融庁の長官、そして MFG、みずほ、そして SMTB 各役員の方と、まあ、プロボの活動でありますけれども、我々の方からも賞金の方を用意させていただいて、業界の新しい未来をお祝いすると、そういうことをやっております。運営の体制としましても、MFG、みずほ、三井住友だけではなくて、あの下の方にあります通り、地方銀行も10校以上の方が全国から参加しておりますし、ここには保険会社も入っていると。まさに金融業界全体で,です、ね、手をつないで大きな円を描いてこのコンペティションで人材育成を進めていこうとそういうことをしておりますそして直近の結果ですねあの非常に数字で分かりやすく出てますが1658人が参加しているということでこれは金融業界のコンペティションで業界初一番大きなコンペティションになっています投稿数 AI モデルの提出した数ですね住宅ローンの延滞のモデルを提出した数これも1万2286件1万件を超えるということで非常に反響をいただいておりますそして優勝者の AI の精度これ 99.48% ということでもうこのオープンプラットフォームで住宅ローンの延滞予測を 99.48% も予測できるようなモデルができていると。これ今回は実用化できないんですが将来的にはこういったオープンプラットフォームで作ったようなモデルプログラミングというのを金融業界全体で使っていけないかとそういうことによって業界全体のシステムコストが下がって大きなイノベーションが生まれるんじゃないかとそのように思っているこの第1弾の取り組みなわけでございます。そして嬉しいのはやっぱ金融って非常に閉鎖的なわけだったんですが今回スラックのコミュニケーション上で 1,000 人以上の方が集まって。会社のいわゆる看板とか肩書きですねもうこういうの外してですね一人の個人としてこのスラックのコミュニケーション上で自分のスキルアップキャリアアップっていうのを一生懸命頑張っているとこういう一人一人が今後の金融業界を支えていくんじゃないのかとそういうふうに思っているのでこの金融業界でのコミュニティっていうのは非常に嬉しく思っておりますそれがウェブであったりツイッターであったりどんどんどんどん拡散されていってですねこのまさに N 対 N のプラットフォーム型の学習ということでこう広がっていっていると。そういういことでありますこの取り組みにはもう学生の方も参加していただいてまして日本最大のデータサイエンス学生団体の DSL さらには早稲田慶応日本大学筑波大学の人工知能センターこういった方々もですねどんどん金融業界のデータを触って金融って非常に面白いなとフィンテックってこういう世界があったのかと
ということでどんどん金融業界の門をですねこの4月の春そしてさらに1年後の春に叩いてほしいな、まあ、もしくは金融機関に入らなくてもですねスタートアップの立場で金融業界を一緒に盛り上げていきたいとそういうふうに思っておりますこちらが1つ目のデータコンピューションの取り組みでして2つ目ですねこちらもご紹介させていただきたいと思います金融 AI の成功パターンということで2月27日に出版いたしましたこれも本を出版することが目的ではありませんあの金融業界の形式基調を作るんだということで出筆者に並んでいる大手金融機関の各社ですねノウハウをそれぞれやっぱり自社の中に閉じ込めてたと、まあ、ある意味これ隠し持ってたっていうことですねこれは競争上しょうがないことではあるんですけどもやっぱり隠しているだけでは業界全体が盛り上がらないので、まあ、一斉のせいで出そうよと一斉のせいで出せばその出した瞬間はマイナス1ですけどもみんなが出せばプラス10でトータルプラス9だろうと。そういうことで一斉のせいでここにノウハウを凝縮させたような本がこの一冊でございます。でなんで出版に至ったのかという意味ではなかなかこの実践いわゆるこの下の方にあるもの本というのは私も50冊以上読んできたんですが私の感覚ではなかなかないなといわゆる教養でプログラミングとか AI の歴史とかそういう本が書かれているもので非常にたくさん有用な本というのはあるんですけども金融機関の本当のノウハウみたいな。そういう本というのはなかなかないだろうというふうに思ってましたので今回各金融機関にですねお願いしてもらってそのノウハウというのをとことん出していただいたということでございます。はい、で具体的なですねこの金融 AI の成功パターンというのを簡単にご紹介させていただきますとこの7種類ターゲティング価値算出事情予測不正検知に始まる7種類これが金融業界の成功の7パターンに類型化されるだろうというふうにまとめ上げたものでございます私自身 AI 組織の立ち上げを MFG でやっていたわけでございますがこれ以外もいっぱいチャレンジしてもう散々失敗しましたもうこんな失敗してももうダメだという意味ではもう今後こういった失敗が業界で繰り返されることがないようにこの成功パターンというのをこの7つにですねこの社団法人で取りまとめをしましてこのパターンについてこの本で余すことなくまあ書いていったとそういうことでございます。はい、のでまあ金融業界の AI の成功パターンと細かく見ていくとこれだけ非常にあってですねいろいろな業態ごとであったりするわけでございまして内容についてはもうご紹介しきれないぐらい325ページ非常にもう細かいデータセット単位でいろいろ書いてありますこちらご関心あればぜひ手に取っていただければと思いますこれ社団法人プロボの活動ですので一切印税も発生しておりませんので全部大学の方に憲法もしてですね今後の金融業界を見らう担う若い人材にこの本を憲法して手に取っていただきたいそのように思っているものでございますで最後ですねこちら簡単にご紹介したいと思いますが横のつながりを大事にするとといいうことで冒頭申し上げましまたこれはまさに今日のようなこういったオープンな場ミートアップでというのは非常に重要な場だと思っております。協会でも3か月に1回全体ミートアップということで官民デジタル庁や金融庁の方そして金融機関の方とミートアップを開催していろんな情報交換を行っております。でこれだけではなくてですねやっぱり将来を担っていく若い方が一人一人が活躍できるようにしたいとそういう意味で若手のデータサイエンスミートアップや若手の競争ワーキンググループこういったよりセグメントを細かく切ったミートアップというのも開催をしてございますさらにやっぱり地銀地方を強くしたいそういう思いから地銀のミートアップこういったものも地域委員会と共同の上ですね開催をしておりますさらには保険やリースこういったところにどんどんどんどんセグメントを切っていくことによって新しいイノベーションは生まれやすくなると思ってますので業態業種に切ってミートアップを開催してここで出た課題というのを業界全体で改善していこうとそういうふうに取り組んでいるというところでございます、はい、ちょっとスピード速かったかもしれませんが金融データ活用推進協会の取り組みについてですねご紹介をさせていただきましたはいありがとうございます All right thank you very much Mr. Okada Could you give us some comments on the expansion of FDUA? ありがとうございますそうですね、まだ1年経っていない中で126社ということで非常にまあ大きくなっておりますので今後という意味では3年でおそらく400社ぐらい金融業界全体をこう大きくまとめていくようなです、ね、団体になっていくとともに金融業界だけではなくて異業種
、まあ、他の業種のところとうまくデータ流通活用させていくことによって社会課題を解決していくような、まあ、発起点になるようなそういった FDUA を目指しているということでございます。はい、ありがとうございました。Okay, thank you very much.